the parabolas with equations y equals x squared plus c and y squared equals x touch, that is, meet tangentially at a single point. It follows that c equals one of these options. Okay, um, so there's a couple ways I'm thinking to approach this. One is to sketch the two parabolas and just sort of geometrically try to figure out what the value of c is. Obviously in the first parabola the value of c just shifts things up and down. And the second would be to um, do something where you know we solve for try to solve for x or solve for, set set something equal to each other um, and then solve and see what happens like uh, force there to be only one solution rather than more than one solution in the past i often would have done this geometrically when it turns out that an algebraic approach would have been much much more straightforward but i'm actually thinking like i don't want to jump into an algebraic approach right away because when i look at this if i solve for you know, if I make, if I substitute x is equal to y squared into the first parabola, then I have a quartic equation for y. And that's probably not something I want to deal with. Um, similarly, if I solve for, if I substitute, uh, you know, solve for x squared in terms of, like what, solve for y in terms of x squared and substitute into the other one, I just don't think it'll, um, It'll be nice. I think a geometric approach actually might still be might still be better here. Um, let's write out what the two parabolas are. So I have y is equal to x squared plus c. This opens upwards and has a um, you know ver shifted vertically by c. And we also have the parabola y squared is equal to x. So this is one that opens to the right, um, and you can see. If I roughly sketch these two things, y squared is equal to x is that, and y is equal to x squared plus c. If, if c is zero, then of course I just have this. Um, but if I shift, if I increase c, there will be a, a point where we meet tangentially like that. And that's the value of C that we're looking for. In fact, we're looking for exactly that coordinate when this happens. Um, something, you know, one thing I could do is we know that if these two things meet tangentially like this, their derivatives are also equal. So maybe I write the derivative. Um, you know, rather than rather than setting up an algebraic equation where, you know, how how would the algebraic approach look? Um, well, y squared is equal to x. So I could then write y is equal to um, y to the four plus c by taking this and putting it in there. And I want there to be only one solution to this. So y to the four minus y plus, oops, y to the four minus y plus c equals zero. Only one solution. Well, I don't really know how to analyze a quartic like this and say that there's only one solution. So let's instead, um, if I take a derivative of the first expression, I get y prime is equal to 2x. And if I take a derivative of the second expression and use you know, implicit differentiation, I have 2y times y prime is equal to 1.
Um, maybe there's something I can do with this. 2y times 2x is equal to 1. So I have xy is equal to 1 over 4. And that gives me, well, y squared is equal to x. So y squared times y is equal to 1 over 4. So y cubed is equal to 1 over 4. So this says that y is equal to um, 4 to the negative 1 over 3. So that is the That'll give me the y-coordinate of this point. I should then be able to solve for the x-coordinate of this point. I have um, y squared is equal to x, right? So y squared is equal to 4 to the negative 2 over 3, and that's equal to x. So the x-coordinate where these two things are tangent is that. And I also have y is equal to x squared plus c. So I have 4 to negative 1 over 3 is equal to 4 to negative 4 over 3 plus c. I should be able to solve for c from this. This is kind of messy. I multiply through by 4 to the power of 4 over 3. I get 4 is equal to um, 1 plus 4 to 4 over 3c. So I get 3 divided by 4 to the 4 over 3 is equal to c. And I think that's, I think this is one of the answers given if I rewrite it as um, C is equal to 3 over 4 times the cube root of 4. And this is option B. Um, you know, the fact that I I took, you know, I, I arrived at one of the right answers, which is a pretty obscure, random looking number, and um, came directly from just piecing together the information given by this graph. It was a little bit more roundabout than I expected uh, to get there, right? We set the derivatives equal. That gives us the y coordinate. The y coordinate gave us the x coordinate. And then we use both the x and y coordinate to find c. But, you know, if it works, it works. So, yeah. Um, I hope I didn't make any mistakes here. But um, I'll let you know if I did. Thanks for watching.